Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCTM PBS SoCal, and we're partnering with the newsroom of KPCC and LAist on a daily reporter roundup. Today, we want to better understand the issues bringing people in Southern California to vote. Let's start with you, Leon. Juan, it's a pleasure to be with you. A few days ago, I was going over a poll about the issues that matter most to Californians in October 2019, and it's striking homelessness, jobs, housing. And one year later, voters in Southern California, like most voters in the United States, but here specifically, I think, are burdened with pressing immediate concerns. The pandemic and its consequences, and then climate change, right? I mean, for Latino voters, the coronavirus is the leading concern. And not surprisingly, given how severely the community has been affected by the virus, voters in California also consider climate change as a, as a top issue. Again, not surprisingly, when you look at the devastation, the state continues to, to endure with the raging forest fires. Both emergencies, I think, add a clear sense of urgency to the decision facing California voters. And Libby, you've been covering the election for really months and months and months. What are you hearing from voters? Well, just as a lot of Angelinos have been motivated to take to the streets and protest this year since the killing of George Floyd, much of the conversation in local elections is about race and criminal justice reform. Of course, Los Angeles County is weighing whether to keep its top cop, Jackie Lacey, the district attorney, in office. And that race has drawn big spending and a lot of attention nationally because challenger George Gascon is seen as an extension of the progressive prosecutor movement in big cities across the country. But other local races are also seeing these issues rise to top of mind. In the Los Angeles City Council District 4 election between incumbent David Rue and Nithya Raman, Rue has accused the more progressive Raman of wanting to completely defund the police. She says that that is a distortion of her support for moving some police funding over to mental health and other alternative programs. Again, it's just really striking how quickly criminal justice issues and our racial reckoning has come to dominate local elections this year. And Philip, you cover the LGBTQ community. What are the issues bringing people out to vote there? You know, the LGBTQ community is coveted by a lot of public officials, but it's hard sometimes to gauge what issues are important to the community for researchers because a lot of times people aren't asking us what's important to us. A lot of times it's coming from social service or social justice groups within the LGBTQ community itself asking them. And a lot of our issues are intersectional and they reflect a lot of what has already been mentioned in terms of homelessness, housing affordability, immigration is a big issue, racial justice reform, in Los Angeles County with the DA's race, that's a hyper important issue for a lot of people in the community because law enforcement impacts the LGBTQ community. It hasn't had the most functional relationship, if you will. And the Black Lives Matter movement has been uh, founded by two women who identify as lesbian or queer. So there's an immediate intersectionality there. But in terms of people asking us what's important, it's difficult because like I said, a lot of folks don't directly ask the LGBTQ community, hey, what's going on? We're kind of an afterthought. We've been burned many times in the past in terms of people coveting us, saying they're gonna do things, then they get into office and surprise, they don't do it. So we'll wait and see. And finally today, we have Tierra Reed with us. She recently did a class assignment at CSUN where students were asked about the issues driving them and the conversations they were having with their families about this election. And I wonder, Tierra, if you could tell us more about your experience. Um, so yes, um, I feel that this current situation or uh, climate that we're in at this moment, we are voting under very unfamiliar times. I've had a conversation with my father recently and we were just talking about, you know, making sure that we're doing our own research because social media has been a huge driving force as far as how people are getting their um, information, especially in my generation at this moment. So I think fact checking and making sure that we are doing our own research as far as the propositions and things of those natures that can directly affect those of us who live and reside in California can definitely make a change. We'd love to know what's driving you to vote this year. You can use the hashtag YLAVotes to share with us. Thank you, Adrian, and thank you all from very diverse newsrooms across Santa California, and we will see you tomorrow.